We will now learn about phase diagrams. We will do that by first looking into a very simple experiment where we dissolve salt into water. Uh, reason to that is that the solubility of one element into another is very important. It's an important feature for understanding phase diagrams. And it's also in importance in, in the real life when we want to manufacture a material and when we solve different, different alloys, element into an alloy in a melt. And also when we do heat treatments and look at the solubilities in the solid state. So we first now look at the solubility phenomena by looking at this simple experiment. Here we have a glass of water. And now we add salt to the water. It's ordinary sodium chloride salt. And to help out to dissolve the salt in the water, we do some stirring. And after a while we see that salt has been dissolved in the water. It's a clear solution. All salt is dissolved. Now we add some more salt. And we do some more stirring. Let's see if we can dissolve also this salt into the water. But still this doesn't work. If you wait for a while and look, we see that still we have salt on the bottom. So now we have a solution with salt, one water, and then we have salt on the bottom. Now we put the beaker on a hot plate and start heating the water. It also help out with some more stirring. And now we will see what happens after a while of stirring and heating of the water. It clears out. And now we see that they have a clear solution and all salt is dissolved again. So the salt that not was dissolved at room temperature is now dissolved at a higher temperature. What we did now was to look at the so-called two-component system. That is the two components, water and salt. And we looked how they behaved relative to each other. But actually we will start looking into an even more simple system. We will look at a one-component system. And we will choose only water. So let's look at the phase diagram from pure water. Here we see the one-component system for water. It's actually a line going from an absolute zero temperature up to higher temperatures. And here we can see in what shape water exists in certain temperature intervals. So from zero temp absolute zero temperature up to zero degrees centigrade, water is solid, that is ice. And from zero degrees centigrade up to 100 degrees centigrade, it's liquid, ordinary water. And from 100 degrees and upwards, it's a gas, a water vapor. So, what we say here is that water exists as different phases at different temperatures. So here the phase is solid, uh, here the phase is liquid, and here the phase is a gas. So that, so that is basically what you can read out of the phase diagram, and a way for a one-component phase diagram in the beginning. This is only valid for, for a pressure of one atmosphere. If I add a pressure line to this system, you get a diagram like this. So here we have a pressure axis, and here we have the temperature axis. And at the pressure of one atmosphere, we will get the same line as we just look at. You see it here, with the two points we could recognize from this system, where we had the phase transitions. But the difference now is that uh, the different phases are existing here in areas in the in the pressure temperature field. So the solid phase exists in this area, the liquid phase, the liquid water in this area, and the gas in this area. And now we can look at these lines. These are called two-phase lines. Along a line like this, two phases are existing. So along this line, both the solid and the liquid are, get, are existing, as long as we are moving in, in these combinations of pressures and temperatures. And we can also see in this system that we have a so-called three-phase point. And it's only one single point in which all three phases can exist together. If we are, for instance, in this one-phase liquid region and uh, have only water then, this condition, 
and we increase the temperature, we're going to move like this and still we have only liquid water. And then we, when we come to this line, we have both uh, liquid water and gas. And when we increase the temperature slightly a little bit more, we come into the rich region and all, all liquid is vaporized and have only gas. So that's the way we can reason when we walk around in this phase diagram. Now we will go over to a two-component system and connect the discussion to the results we got from the dissolution of salt in water in the simple experiments we did from the beginning. Here we see a diagram. This is a phase diagram with the temperature on this axis and the, the composition of salt on this axis. In this case, uh, the diagram is for a potassium nitrite, but we can call it a salt. Uh, in our experiment, we worked with sodium chloride, and in this context, it's more or less the same. And what we see in this diagram is a line here. And this is actually the solubility line for salt in water. It shows the maximum solubility of salt in water at different temperatures. It's a lower solubility here at low temperatures than it is at the high temperatures. And that's actually what we saw in the experiments. What we did in the experiment, we first had the composition somewhere here. And we solved the salt and got a clear solution, a one-phase solution of uh, salt in water. And then we added some more salt and came into this area. And we saw that salt was lying on the bottom. Although we stirred around for a while, still salt was lying on the bottom. It means that we had two phases. We had solid salt and we had a solution which contained some salt. So, but then we increased the temperature. We went up here. And then we stirred again. And the result now was that we actually could dissolve all this salt. And after a while we had a clear solution of salt in water again at this temperature then. And what can we see more in, the, in this diagram? Well, this is called a one-phase region. Here we have a clear solution. And this is a two-phase two region. And here we have, always will have one solution. And we will have salt lying on the bottom in this case. And this line shows all the time the maximum sol solubility of salt in water and also it also all the time shows the composition of the solution as long as we have solid salt in the system. If, I have, if there exists solid salt lying on the bottom uh, we will always follow this line uh, when it comes to the composition of the, the solution. Now let's move the solubility line into a real phase diagram. Here we have the phase diagram for the system uh, water and salt. We still have the temperature on this axis and then we have the composition on this axis. And uh, here is the solubility line, which we discussed before. Is it the same line? But now we put it into context. And we see here that we get a one phase region for this solution of salt in water. And here we have the boiling point, and here we have the freezing point of water. This, is, this line is the line for pure water. And we can see that the, uh, adding salt uh, will increase the boiling point. Uh, here is gas, G, G stands for gas. And down here we see that adding salt slightly decreases the freezing point. Down here we have a two-phase region with ice here and, and salt here and they don't, don't solve anything in each other, they have no solubility, so they're just straight lines here. Zero solubility of ice into salt and salt into ice. We will not discuss this type of system further. We will start looking into more simple types of two component systems first.